I'm going to talk about a topic today which affects a lot of people, uh, especially females that have fair skin, and I'm talking about the dreaded upper lip wrinkles. They happen a lot in those with fair skin. Now, the reason for this is fair skin has less uh, melanin or pigment in it, and melanin is actually protective against UV radiation. So, you don't generally see upper lip wrinkles in those with darker skin types. Also, females tend to have more upper lip wrinkles because they have finer skin than men and are uh, more uh, prone to wrinkling because of finer skin. Sun exposure has to be also one of the main causes of upper lip wrinkles. And uh, you'll find that in those people who, um, who in the sun a lot without sunscreen uh, or have had chronic sun exposure over the years, they are very likely to get upper lip wrinkles. Um, also, the upper lip tends to be hit by the sun, uh, especially if it sticks out a little bit. Um, and and uh, sun is the primary cause of wrinkling of the skin. Volume loss with aging is another cause of upper lip wrinkles. So, as we get older, uh, our faces shrivel with time, and that includes the upper lip. Uh, so, the upper lip uh, skin, as well as the vermilion of the lips, the red part of the lips, they all become smaller and shrivel with age and shrink with age. Now movement of the mouth is also a, uh, a cause of uh, upper lip wrink lines. So pursing of the lips, talking, uh, and, and just contraction of the muscles around the mouth. There's a muscle around the mouth called the bicularis oris and this muscle uh, works like a purse string. So purses the lips and causes uh, lines to appear on the upper lip. Smoking can be a cause or accelerate upper lip lines. Now, it's funny that uh, upper lip lines are often called smokes lines. However, the problem often occurs in non-smokers. But smoking does actually reduce the amount of antioxidants you have in your body, in your skin, and uh, makes the skin more prone to sun damage and uh, aging. So, how do we treat um, upper lip lines? Now, Treating them is, um, is, is a matter of looking at the underlying causes and uh, addressing those uh, causes. So let's go from the top. So basically sun damage um, being the first cause. So first thing to do is to prevent further lip wrinkling by using sunscreen and avoiding sun on the face as much as possible. Um, that means wearing a hat, you know, finding shade where possible, etc. Addressing the other causes of upper lip lines may include uh, replacement of volume of the upper lip, so putting in a dermal filler. Now this can be done in a number of ways. So firstly, you can actually use a, a fine dermal filler in the actual skin to actually plump out each individual line itself. So going actually into the line and plumping up the line. This tends to work um, okay. It's not the best treatment. Uh, it's certainly not as effective as, as erbium laser resurfacing, uh, but you get a moderate degree of improvement. But the beauty of it is that there's not really much downtime. So usually you can get away with no bruising or not too much swelling or lumps. So um, dermal fillers is a great way to improve um, upper lip lines, but not as effective. Great for people who don't want to uh, have too much downtime. Um, also, the other way of using dermal fillers is to actually volumize the whole area. That is, for example, putting a sheet of dermal filler just under the skin uh, to actually re-plump up the whole skin and even the lip a bit as well. You want to actually improve the size of the lip and the structure of the whole area. And that definitely improves upper lip lines. It stops the mouth muscle from pursing as, as strongly on the, or as crushing the lips, uh, the skin of the lips, uh, upper lip skin, when, when you purse. So it definitely gives the skin more resilience. You can use a bit of Botox in the upper lip. Now this addresses the underlying um, cause of uh, upper lip lines, which is um, from the muscle action. So Botox will paralyze the muscle a bit. Um, only problem is we do need that muscle uh, to talk and to eat and to kiss and um, and to drink and spit, uh, spit say, um, spit out water after, spit out our toothpaste after we, we brush our teeth. Um, I've actually um, Botoxed a patient before and they had trouble uh, blowing in a breathalyzer. So Botox does work and it does also have the added advantage of curling out the lip a bit, which, um, which the women, women and 
girls tend to love because it makes the upper lip a bit fuller, but it can lose a bit of function, like uh, if you get pulled over by the cops and you have to blow in the breathalyzer, it can be a problem sometimes. Now, erasing upper lip lines is probably best done with the use of ablative lasers. Uh, this, this treatment is not necessary for everybody. It's quite an uh, invasive treatment. It takes a fair amount of time to recover from, usually one to two weeks. Um, I most commonly use an erbium laser, which is a, an ablative laser, which basically means that you take the top layer of skin off, the, uh, you take the top layer of skin off, and new skin grows back without wrinkles, and uh, that's probably the best way of removing upper lip lines. Here's a demonstration of the erbium laser on a paddle pop stick and you can see that it takes the top layer off the paddle pop stick. The layer literally gets vaporized and uh, blated and, and uh, goes into a puff of smoke. So uh, with that you get new skin. Carbon dioxide laser can also be used uh, for ablating the top layer of skin. However, the carbon dioxide laser has a lot more heat energy so it uh, tends to cause shrinkage of the skin as well. Now, um, that might be advantageous around the area, an area like the eye, for example, because heating the skin and shrinking the skin will tighten the skin. But generally, the upper lip doesn't need a lot of tightening. And I find that the erbium laser, which doesn't heat the skin or tighten the skin as much, is actually more effective at um, carefully taking a, a certain amount of skin off to the point where you know you can you can get a nice resurfacing. So I find the erbium laser much more easier to um, to get the right depth as well as um, you know pr produce a great result with actually probably fewer side effects than the CO2 laser. In fact, uh, the CO2 laser um, when used in in the old days a long time ago, it used to be used very aggressively and and it used to be used solely on the upper lip and people used to get. Uh, a lot of like a milk mustache look which is hypopigmentation or loss of pigmentation in the upper lip and this happens uh, more so with the uh, CO2 laser than the erbium laser which you don't tend to see that problem with. So I hope you enjoyed my summary of uh, treating the upper lip, upper lip lines and uh, look forward to answering more of your questions in the future.